So here's the challenge, though. We have all that data. We count too much data. And we also count too much on the data. So these numbers relate to either people I've seen or stories I've read about how, you know, I've tripled my profits 320% and, you know, 100% increase in campaign response to my revenue. Like, if this was true, why would we do anything else? Right? I asked this person, by the way, way back when. I said, wow, that's amazing. I said, just give me what you do. I'm going to go home. I'm going to retire. Right? So we know it's not true because we know this stuff's not scalable. We know that this is all done out of context. So Amazon would, is a great example because if any of that was true, Amazon would be the biggest business in the world, be the only business in the world, be the single business in the world. So why aren't they? So this is about Benjamin Banneker. I call it the Benjamin Banneker effect. It's really simple. In the United States, and much like here, every school, every high school has the same curriculum. It makes no difference. Public, private, religious, homeschooling. Ninth grade, you learn American history. Tenth grade, you learn world history. Eleventh grade, you learn something called civilization, which astounds me, but so, we, so it is. So Benjamin Banneker is a freed African-American slave, lived during the time of the American Revolution, the 1700s. My daughter wanted to write a paper on him for her ninth grade class. Went to the library, couldn't find the books. We found two books on Amazon, only two books have ever been written about him. I bought both books. What do you think I got for the next two years? Anybody want to take a guess from Amazon? The email that said, Dear Mr. Sable, we know you have a particular interest in African American history. Here are more books for you. Now, it's not that I didn't have an interest, but it wasn't my particular interest. All they needed to understand was one piece of data. Right? So what data did they have? They know I'm what's called a charter buyer on Amazon, one of the first 1,500 people to buy. They know that I buy a lot of books. They know I buy other stuff. So I must, they put that together with this. And they say, OK, here's what he's going to do. Wrong, 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 wrong. All they needed to know that she was in ninth grade. Think about the richness of the experience, if you will. Remember the word experience, because I want everybody to go to my blog today and read about experience. But Think about the riches of the experience if they knew she was in ninth grade. For the next eight years, they could have served her and our family really interesting and important information from one piece of data. But they didn't have it because they had no clue about the, the primal data point. They, they didn't know. But here's the issue, right? The downside is privacy. Privacy is going to be more and more of an issue. You all know that. In Europe, it's worse than the States, although we, we, we will catch up with you, trust me, because there is going to be legislation. And here's the problem, right? We keep telling everybody we know everything about you. Right? We're the ones, it's the marketers who are doing this. Lester says, Lester Wonderman says it's great. He goes, I don't know why anybody cares because marketers really don't know what to do with it anyway. So he said, maybe we should just tell that to the public and it would make them feel a lot better. But the truth is, that's what we tell everybody, right? We know everything about you. But here's the thing this is what we have to worry about, not Big Brother. Because the big brother scenario is much like Lester says. There's not much you can do with that information, the general information, except if, obviously if you're an identity thief. This is the real key, right? This is the, this is the critical issue. The critical issue is your roommate who puts the camera on you when you don't know it and then puts it out. The people you sit next to who start Twittering all kinds of stuff about you anonymously. That's the stuff, that's the stuff that's scary. And we're not paying enough attention to that. And I think as marketers, we need to be paying more attention to that. It's almost like I sort of try, I, I, I tried to liken it to the beer guys who say, don't drink and drive. Right? Like, we should put warnings up with our software about stuff like this. But, but this is the real issue on privacy, by the way. And it's something that we should talk about. So it's not about dashboards. Dashboards are cool, but they don't really mean much. It's not about software loops. CRM is nothing but a big software loop if you don't do something with it. What it is is about insight. So listen to this, right? John Nesbitt, one of the great philosophers, if you will, of, of the computer age. Intuition becomes increasingly valuable in the new information society precisely because there is so much data. See, he's saying, the big guru is saying, not that there's so much data, ergo we're going to be hugely successful, but because there's so much data, we better have more intuition. We better know my daughter's in, eighth, in ninth grade and why she's writing that paper. You better know why I bought that book. You better have some insight into me. You better know my primal data point. Otherwise, all you have is lots and lots of data. So if you want real revolution, think about value and insight. The further you go down the insight, and all of these are all data points, right? Data mining, advanced analytics space, they're all flatline unless you add insight. Because you have to have insight. Without insight, there is no revolution. So let's just go back and review. I know I'm going fast, but I want to get the questions in. Evolution, 
is ads on the web. They're fine, it's a nice place to be, but frankly, like I could have done that 10 years ago, who cares? Revolution is understanding this, is understanding the primal data point, is understanding that the game has changed. It's no longer about all the data, it's about understanding that primal data point, making sure that you get that it's not microtrends, it's nanotrends. There's not one big persona that covers everybody. I could be 10 personas and do all these different things. It's the revolution of the convergence of advertising, marketing, and interaction and commerce from microsense to nanotrends. I talked about that. So let me tell you about the seven pillars of the revolution. These are the seven critical things that have happened and are happening in the world, in the digital world, that we don't pay enough attention to. And I say we, it's everybody. So the first pillar, Google. So I apologize, it's not Bing. I use Bing and I usually use Bing, but they, they started it so they get the credit. So what happened, right? Up until Google, it was a linear experience. The web was all linear. Everything was linear. Yahoo is the brilliant creator of the linear experience, right? Why? Because they charge by the click. So they took you 20 clicks to find your own name because they got paid every step of the way. Along comes Google and says, you know, this is like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. You click your heels three times, I want to go home, and I'm there. Change the game, right? Because now it wasn't about the website, which we still talk about, right? And if anybody talks about a website, walk out of the room. We still talk about websites. It's about, I go there. I click my heels, I'm where I need to be. Not the website, I'm at the web experience, at the web page, at the web, whatever you want to call it. But I've gone to the place that I want to be. Number two, one-click shopping. Huge. Huge. What's the implication? Stickiness is totally irrelevant. See, up until one-click shopping, Everybody believed that the game was stickiness. I got to keep those people on my website. So you know how many people, and again, website stickiness all goes together because it was all linear. So do you know how many people used to take the backup button out and say, well, it's great. You know, I got people for an hour on my site. Sure, because they couldn't figure out how to get out. And they didn't want to turn the computer off because that scared them 15 years ago. So they know what to do. And I got 10 minutes. I got to hurry. So the implication is stickiness is irrelevant. I don't care if somebody comes for two seconds 10 minutes or 10 days. If they're not buying, if there's no business outcome, there's no commerce, and again, it doesn't mean money. Sometimes it's just download a paper, download a beta, do something, then what do I care? I've, I've lost it. I missed it. So stickiness is no good. Number three, everything today goes to this conversation prism, right? That is what the web has done to us. So what's the implication? The implication is actually return to the past because what's happened is all we've done is amplify the basic social framework that we all live in, and it's great. And if you think about it, nothing that's happening is not unlike what you would do. And in fact, we're seeing the trends reverse today because now it's much more about your five friends than it is about the 500 friends. So the question I always ask, when, in fact, I just did a, a presentation with, with Facebook in New York. So I always ask the question, how many people in the room have more than 10 friends on their Facebook page? Raise your hands. More than 50? Keep your hands up. More than 100? More than 200? OK, take a look around. There's a few people who have more than 200. So of the 200, how many of those people will pick you up at the airport? <laughs> See, you all left, but that's the truth, right? So the implication is it's about, it's about getting back to the basics of human interaction. Number four, there is only one internet. So what's the implication? The implication is to stop talking about screens. Screens are irrelevant. Who cares? Screens are not important. There's one internet, right? And the cloud makes that even bigger and more important. All the stuff that we have comes from one source. So the beauty is it could be 50 screens. Who knows what there's going to be next year, right? The next stuff, and I've seen some amazing stuff in Japan, you know, these little flat panels that, that fold out. Is that another screen? Is that yet another screen? No. There's one internet. There's one source for all this stuff. Start thinking about how do you maximize that. Number five, mobile. What's the implication? <laughs> the shackles are off. I can go anyplace. Now, by the way, PC is mobile. An iPad is mobile. This is not the only thing that's mobile. We make a mistake thinking that cell phones are the only mobile thing. Now, by the way, this is awesome. Anybody hasn't started using the uh, new Windows 7, which is neither Windows nor 7, which is a separate discussion we can have one day, but it happens to be very, very good. In fact, I think it would be better if we didn't set it up as Windows 7 because the expectation would be different. 
Six, geospatial, right? Like, find me. So what's the implication? The implication is you can find me. Like, I know where Waldo is, right? I don't got to look for him. I know exactly where he is, and that's huge. Number seven, tasks. I can now do anything. I can use this device. I can use my iPad, whatever it is. Tasks, I can do all these different things. The seven revolutions, really important. So what do they mean, right? Websites are dead. Remember this, websites are dead. Stop thinking about websites, but long live the web because it's all about the web. It's all about the experiences on the web. Down with complexity, right? That's a huge revolutionary idea. Think about one click. Everything has to be one click. Don't make me sign up 10 times. Don't make me write my name in 10 times. Don't make me go through three clicks. One click shopping. Up with my friends. It's all about my friends. It's about the people who are in closest to me. Hugely important. Mono webism. Right? There's one web, there's one source, there's one internet. All this stuff comes from the same place. And by the way, the cloud makes that even better. I'm free, right? I'm free, I'm not shackled. I'm not shackled to my desk, I'm not shackled to any, whoops, I'm not shackled to anything special. I'm never lost, right? Geospatial, you know where I am, I know where you are, and I can do anything. Because there's nothing that I can't do today on my phone, almost nothing anyways. So what are the revolutionary ideas? Write these down. All digital is direct. If you don't think about digital as being direct, you just lost half of, the, half of the power of what digital is about. All digital is direct. That's what it is. Otherwise, why bother? It's a two-way street. Second, there is no digital without data. So I talked about the primal data point. I tell you that we do collect way too much data. But there is no digital without data. Because then you might as well just do a print ad. Right? What's the difference in a print ad and a digital ad without data? Nothing. All relationships are local. This is a key. This is a key, and it's getting more and more important, right? All relationships are local. It's all about local. More and more searches. I'm 70% of search is local, and it's going to get even more. It's all about local. I'm local. You're local. The primal data point is local. That's how you have to think, right? All relationships are local. So these, I still got another minute. Boy, I can't believe I did this. Um, you know, these are just revolutionary statistics, right? By 2013, one billion smartphones in the world. That's amazing, right? It's crazy, and you heard the numbers before from the, the guys who showed you the mobile. 53% of mobile searches on Bing have a local intent, and some 70% in the US of all search today is getting local, which is crazy. You know, again, you saw some of this. This is how much is gonna go up. This is how much spending is gonna go up. It's crazy. And then again, when you think about it, right, you need to go social. What are the business outcomes, relevant content, curation, insight data? These are things you need to be thinking about in general across the revolution. So when you think about all the stats, if we're not doing these things, we're wasting our time. So at the end of the day, it's all about that primal data point. That is the key. And we can know it today. We have the ability to know it. But again, it's not just knowing it from the data, but it's the insight. It's spending the time to understand who are the people we talk to, what do they want, what's important to them, and what can we do to make their lives better. for a phone to save us from our phones. New Windows Phone, designed to get you in and out and back to life. Now, here's a thought I'm going to leave you with. That's how number, that's the number of views that that received in a month because it was put online before it ran. You tell me. So at the end of the day, 
It's your choice. Evolution or revolution. And I hope I was clear that if it's not revolution, we're just wasting our time. Thank you.